Hello and welcome or welcome back to another art vlog. Today is all about painting. I will try oil pastels for the first time, for example, and I'm finally starting to plan the products I want to offer in my long-awaited and soon-to-be future shop, so a lot of exciting stuff. But before we get into that, I would like to take you with me to the museum. In my second last video, I already told you that I would really want to visit Museum Barberini in Potsdam, but since it's in Potsdam, it's a little trip. I really wanted to go there because they have a huge impressionist collection, among them a lot of Monet, for example, which I love a lot. So I finally booked a ticket and I'm going to take you with me. Oh yeah, and if you're new here, my name is Hannah. I always tend to forget to introduce myself, so hi. <laughs> Okay, I'm back home again and I quickly wanted to show you the postcards I of course got because I'm a sucker for postcards and I just couldn't resist. So a little while ago I discovered an artist on YouTube who draws such amazing artworks and especially portraits with oil pastels. I particularly admire her color palettes a lot and this has inspired me so much even that I bought myself a small set of oil pastels to try it myself for the first time. Now I finally got around to trying them out and it really wasn't easy to be honest, first of all of course, it's a whole new medium for me to get used to and figure out the best way to use it. But I also don't know if it was a good idea to use a canvas board as a surface since it's so roughly textured. I think I'll definitely have to draw on paper with the pastels again for comparison to figure that out. But finding the right colors was also kind of a challenge. I don't know if it's because I don't have the most extensive set of colors right now or if I just haven't figured out the best way to mix them yet or rather how I layer the colors in the best possible way because I've seen that very often in this artist's videos that she applies very many layers of paint on top of each other and it works so I guess it's me in this case. After trying it myself for the first time, I admire even more so artists who can implement precise details with oil pastels. Because the pastels are pretty clunky, they have this flat white surface you are meant to draw with. And in the meantime, when I was in the drawing process, I really doubted most of the time whether I would like the drawing in the end. In the end, however, I'm quite happy with the result for the fact that it was the first time for me. I'm just not sure how I seal the colors best because otherwise the drawing would stain extremely a touch. As you can see, drawing with oil pastels is already very messy, so I think you can imagine. Um, if you have any tips on that, please let me know in the comments. I would very appreciate that. Normally I always tend to be quite stressed and have difficulties to really relax. 
Painting is one of the few activities that allows me to actually be in the present moment. And even if this drawing was particularly challenging, it was just me and the drawing for a while. So for that alone, it was worth it. But I think every time I've tried something new, I tried a new medium or tried to draw or paint motives that I haven't been so comfortable with yet or trying something completely different. This has always been very helpful in some way and yeah, I don't think that I have to tell you that not everything you start or touch has to become a masterpiece, even though I myself am guilty of the desire that when I put hours and hours in a painting, for example, I of course hope that I can hold something that I really like in my hands at the end of the day. So even if I don't tell something new here, <laughs> I think it's still important to yeah, remember that from time to time, even if you know that rationally. Um, at least I tend to forget that sometimes when I'm in the heat of things, so yeah. When I walked in this morning, it's one day later, I only realized that that ear is way too far away from her face. When you see that, you can't unsee it. So I think it's supposed to be here. The ear is definitely not right at that spot. <laughs> oh man. my latest videos I already mentioned that I loved to make jewelry myself during my childhood and early teenage years. That's why I still have this massive box with all the beads that have accumulated over the years and which I have glued at that time so incredibly kitschy with those glitter stones. Then the other day I found two super beautiful types of beads in cube form with which I really wanted to make a necklace. After that I thought, oh, a friend of yours has a birthday coming up and another friend you will be seeing again soon after a long time. Maybe you could just make them one as a little gift too. And from then on, I was kind of unstoppable. I may or may not have gone a little wild at the bead store because I felt inspired and had so many ideas for new necklaces. Luckily, most of these beads have been on sale. <laughs> Anyway, early next year I would like to finally have my online store in which I would offer mostly prints, postcards and maybe a few originals of my paintings. Since I also like to make small containers with air dry clay and to paint on them afterwards, that would also be something that I could imagine to offer as unique pieces in a small amount and then the thought came to me whether I could not also consider my necklaces as products for my shop too. My boyfriend said it's going to be your shop, you can offer whatever you want to offer and that motivated me a lot. First of all I will never be able to keep all these necklaces myself and if no one wants them later, I can cut them up again if necessary and put them back in my bead box. And I also really like the process itself of making jewelry myself. It's super calming, it's creative because you have to look which colors go well together, which 
beads itself go well together and you have to make some kind of composition and yes I think that would be kind of a win-win situation and I've also been experimenting with larger and more unusual beads that I have had for ages and never knew what to use them for so yeah we shall see I have to say I really like all of the necklaces I've created so far but I know I can't keep them all or wear them all so I want them to be gifts or maybe actually for my future shop we'll see <laughs> but because I can't keep them all I decided that I will make one necklace particularly for myself I will choose a color which was Dark blue, of course. I, I was a bit indecisive if I want a purple one or a blue shade because purple blue tones are my favorite colors. But I decided to go for the dark blue. When I was at the bead store, I found those dark blue dices and I liked them so much that I really wanted to include them. So my necklace had to be dark blue <laughs> and it made the decision a little bit easier. And I also turned the dices into charms, so I have the option to um, put them on my earring hoops. Let me show you. I hope you can see that. Um, yes, and I also included them into my necklace. <laughs> Weird close up. It's a little bit kitschy because there is a teddy bear and a sun with a face included, but I like the mix of it and she's also a little bit more on the chunky side of things. So this is not a necklace I would wear every day. This is the reason why I will keep a second necklace. Uh, I forgot about it, but this was the one in purple blue I made initially, which sparked my old flame for making jewelry myself. But now I have a little bit more of variety to choose from. I know sometimes I'm a bit of a Christmas tree with all of my jewelry I wear all the time, but yeah, this one is pretty chunky though, so I have a little bit more to choose from. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I've already told you a couple of times that I want to open an online store as soon as I graduate with my studies. And now that I'm approaching my graduation, I'm so excited to finally do this and I'm thinking more and more of products I want to offer. And the main thing will be prints of my paintings. First of all, prints are more affordable. I can reproduce them as often as I want. And third thing is that I am not very good when it comes to separating myself from my originals. I know that there are some people that would prefer buying an original because they want to have something yeah, original, but I know that is first of all not a thing that everyone can afford and I'm also not going to be selling every original piece. Maybe one day I will be better at separating myself from them because of course over the years I'm going to accumulate even more paintings and I can't keep them all forever so I think at some point I will say goodbye to some pieces. But right now I'm going to concentrate mostly on prints and as you've seen, probably the necklaces and clay containers. Okay, you might have seen them in my past videos too. I made a couple of those clay containers with a little smiley on the bottom, so it will smile at you when you open it. Um, and I also really like that pattern. And I'm going to recreate a small amount of them for my shop so that they are also special original pieces and in one of my first videos i think actually my first ever paint with me video i painted on glass lockets this is the only one i still possess and i also made an extra video for painting those tiny paintings for this tiny frames i gifted the most beautiful one with water lilies to my mother and I still like that one a lot, but those three I don't like as much. And I won't sell ever anything I'm not satisfied with myself. So I'm going to paint three new paintings for those three frames so that I can have a good feeling when offering them. 
Uh, yeah, and this is also another opportunity to sell small original pieces. If someone will want to have them, I don't know, we will see, but yeah, I'm really excited to finally get into it and think about how my shop is going to look and what I'm going to offer. Yes, it's going to be a little bit tricky to manage all of this because, as I said, I'm about to graduate and now I'm entering the phase in which I actually have to implement my bachelor project and now I'm at the very beginning and I'm kind of procrastinating sometimes. I'm not always the type for that but now I have a lot of difficulties to get into the flow. As soon as I'm into it, it's no problem anymore, but I have to get into it and I have to say something I'm that excited for as my shop is kind of distracting um, because I would like to do that a hundred times more than doing research for my stupid bachelor project. <laughs> and I have to admit that this might be also a reason that I've gone a little bit off the rails with all of those necklaces, but I'm sure I'm going to be able to manage it somehow. But I have to see how I'm going to actually do the things in the best possible way. might remember what I just said about procrastination. I was supposed or I am supposed to do research for my bachelor project and I was kind of unconcentrated and flipping through my sketchbook and I stumbled upon a sketch that made me think oh hello <laughs> and which I think would make a great cover for a thank you card don't you think? And I could imagine to turn those into stickers. I would have to draw them again digitally so it's easier to get a good printed result. But I mean, the colors are also very on brand. Not that I have decided on specific colors as if in a corporate design or something, but I can't say that those aren't colors I always tend to use because those kind of shades are among my favorite colors. Yeah, so I figured, why not? So I sent the thank you cards out to be printed. I'm really curious how they will look when they are finished. And I even expanded the illustration later and now used it as a banner for YouTube. I think the overall look of my channel is so much better now. And I set the violet as a watermark for my videos too. Okay, I will sign off for today. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with me. If you liked this video and if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, I hope to see you in my next one. Goodbye.